It is time now for the Mule Train News Program on this Monday, January the 16th, 2017. Brought to you today by Leal's Mexican Restaurant and the First Bank. Funeral services for Daryl Jennings, 74, of Lubbock, former longtime resident of the Las Betty community, will be held Tuesday afternoon at the First Baptist Church in Millshoe with Dr. Stacy Connor, pastor, officiating. Beryl will be in the Last Buddy Cemetery under the direction of Ellie's Funeral Home of Millshoe. Lunch will be served before the funeral on Tuesday at 12.30 in the First Baptist Church Fellowship Hall. Of course, if you can have your food there early, that helps the ladies so much preparing the meal. They uh, plan on 70 to 80 family members of the Jennings family. Daryl Jennings, 74 years of age, died on Thursday of last week at the Raider Ranch in Lubbock. He was the first cousin of Belinda Head of Muleshoe. He was born August the 25th, 1942, in Clovis, to Joe Bates and Corabel Page Jennings. He married Glenda J. Robinson on January on uh, September the 9th, 1962, in Lasbury, where he lived most of his life. Daryl graduated from Lasbury High School and from Texas Tech University and was a cattleman and feedlot owner and operator. He was a member of the board of Bovina Feeders and the Muleshoe Area Hospital District as well as the Lasbury School Board. He belonged to the Lasbury United Methodist Church. Darrell was a respected businessman who had an admirable way of making everyone feel valued and important. His greatest assets beyond his big smile, huge heart, and gentle kindness were his family and friends. Although he welcomed all with open arms, he was fiercely protective of those he loved and worked hard to make their lives better in any way that he could. If only with humor or one of his trademarks were hugs. His smile and laughter lit up a room and will be missed as seemingly simple yet authentic and treasured gifts. Daryl Jennings was preceded in death by his young son, Darren Lynn Jennings, who died of leukemia in 1972. His parents, Cora Bell and Joe Bates Jennings of Muleshoe, and his grandparents, Mr. and Mrs. O. N. Jennings, also of Muleshoe. Daryl Jennings is survived by his wife of 54 years, Glenda, of Raider Ranch in Lubbock his daughter, Janessa Brockman, and her husband, Guy, of Shallow Water, his sister, Tamara Jennings, of Twist, Washington, a brother, Hoppy Jennings, and his wife, Marcella, of Hearst, and two grandsons, Darren Gage and Bo Philip Brockman, both of Shallow Water. Also, he has an aunt, Pat Nichols of Lubbock and the Raider Ranch, who formerly lived here in Muleshoe for years. In lieu of flowers, the Jennings family asked that memorial donations be made to the Alzheimer's Association at ALZ.org or to St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital at www.org. Jude.org. You can also go on to the website of Ellie's Funeral Home to share sympathy messages at www.elliesfuneralhomes.com. Please remember all of the Jennings family in your prayers and repeating funeral services for 
Daryl Jennings, 74, of the Raider Ranch in Lubbock, formerly of the Las Betty community, will be held at 2 Tuesday afternoon at the First Baptist Church in Milshew with Dr. Stacy Connor, pastor, officiating. Beryl will follow in the Las Betty Cemetery under the direction of Ellie's Funeral Home of Milshew. Lunch for the family will be served at 1230 before the funeral in the First Baptist Church Fellowship Hall, and they are planning on feeding between 70 and 80 family members. Daryl Jennings died on Thursday of last week at the Raider Ranch in Lubbock. He was the first cousin of Belinda Head of Milshew. James Carl Etheridge, 76, of Idaloo, formerly of Milshew, and a Milshew High School graduate, died on December the 31st. Funeral services for James Etheridge were held at 11 Monday morning at the Seventh-day Adventist Church with Kent, Ken Cartwright officiating. James Etheridge was a graduate of Milshew High School in the late 1950s. He also graduated from Texas Tech with a degree in education and owned in Lubbock a comic shop. He was preceded in death by his parents and a daughter, Donna DeLynn. Survivors of James Etheridge are his wife, Diane, of the home in Idaloo, his son, Kelly, a daughter, Angela Hawkins, a brother, Alvin Etheridge, formerly of Milshew, and grandchildren, Quentin and Haley. Please remember all of the family of James Etheridge, 76, of Idaloo, a Milshew High School graduate in your prayers. The funeral was held Monday morning at the Seventh-day Adventist Church in Lubbock. Funeral services for Robert Berry, 58, of Venus, formerly of Milshew, and a Milshew High School graduate of 1979, were held Monday morning at the Creekwood Church in Mansfield near Memphis. Please remember all of the family of Robert Berry in your prayers. He was the son of the late Barbara Berry of Milshew, who worked for years at the Parkview Nursing Care Center here in Milshew. His father, Alan Berry, formerly of Milshew, now lives in Venus. He also has here in Milshew a brother, Jimmy Berry, and two sisters, Robin Atwood and Linda Tosh. Remember all of the family in your prayers. He was married to the farmer Tammy Whitaker here in Milshew on Valentine's Day of 1980. It was a wet weekend here in Milshew. And officially, we received 77 one hundredths of an inch of moisture over the total weekend. Now, on Sunday, we got 49 one hundredths of an inch of rain. On um, Saturday, 24 one hundredths and 4 one hundredths on Friday. And that is the National Weather Service Bureau's weather gauge here at Channel 6 at 1011 West 3rd in Milshew. But out at the Mezzo side of Milshew, which is located two miles south, southwest of town, they got 76 one-hundredths of an inch of moisture. So we did just a little bit better than that. But Martin got one and twenty one hundredths, Olton one and forty two one hundredths, Freona one and twenty six one hundredths, Dora, New Mexico ninety one one hundredths, Amherst, our neighbor one twenty and twenty four one hundredths, Plains one and nine one hundredths, Denver City one and three one hundredths, and Florida got 88 100s over in whirlwind country. 
The high in Muleshoe on Sunday was 35. The low was 27. At 7 o'clock on Monday morning, it was 28 degrees. And now, Five Area Telephone, West Plains Telecommunications, brings you the weather forecast for Muleshoe, Sudan, Amherst, Earth, and our entire vicinity. Secure your life with fast technologies available through Five Area, whether you're in Muleshoe or anywhere in the world. Security and automation services for your home, farm or business available now through your hometown company five area plans starting now at twenty dollars per month fast technologies offers live and recordable video surveillance control your door locks and garage doors whether you're in your recliner around the corner or in dallas lighting control and motion detection door and window sensors receive alerts through text email or phone plans again starting at twenty dollars per month call today Five area 806-272-5533 or go by their website at fiveareacom They will also be happy to give you an on-site demo, so stop by their offices today, 302 Uvalde Street on the west edge of Muleshoe. A DSL internet connection is required. That's home, farm, and business security and automation services available through Fast Technologies at Five Area. Call 806-272-5533 for more information. Well, looking at our Martin Luther King Jr. forecast today here on Monday for the Muleshoe area, mostly sunny, high near 50 degrees, northwest winds around 10 miles per hour, mostly cloudy tonight, low around 26, north winds 5 to 10 miles per hour, all of the rain is over with for the short term, but then tomorrow on Tuesday, mostly sunny, high near 53 degrees, north winds around 5 miles per hour, becoming south in the afternoon, then Tuesday night at 20% chance of showers, mostly cloudy, low around 31, south winds around 5 miles per hour, becoming west-southwest after midnight. Mostly sunny on Wednesday, high near 58 degrees, southwest winds between 5 and 15 miles per hour. Wednesday night, mostly clear, low around 33, southwest winds between 10 and 15 miles per hour. Sunny on Thursday, high near 63 degrees, west winds between 15 and 20 miles per hour. Thursday night, partly cloudy, low around 35. Mostly sunny on Friday, high around 59 degrees. Windy conditions with the west wind between 15 and 20 miles per hour, increasing to 25 to 30 miles per hour. In the morning, winds could gust as high as 40 miles per hour. Partly cloudy Friday night, low around 31. So a nice forecast underway as it will be mostly sunny and warming during most of the week. High around 50 today on Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Northwest wind around 10 miles per hour, mostly cloudy. Tonight around 26. Then Tuesday mostly sunny. High near 53 with calm winds and then a 20% chance of showers Tuesday night. Mostly cloudy, low around 31. Five area telephone. West Plains Telecommunications has presented to you this edition of the weather forecast. This is Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday celebration day. The banks, the post office, federal offices, county offices, church offices, and some other offices are closed in observance of Martin Luther King's birthday. Be sure that you listen to the interview we did on Friday afternoon with Jay Messenger, president of the Milshoe State Bank. He explains the merger of the AIM Bank with the Milshoe State Bank, which will occur later this spring. On Friday, there will be no school in Milshoe because of the Bailey County Junior Livestock Show. On Thursday, from 1 until 6, animals will be moved into the Bailey County Civic Center where the livestock show will be held for 2017. On Friday morning, 8.30 until noon, there will be beef cattle show, also the judging of the dairy cattle, sheep and goats and then at one o'clock they'll pick back up with the judging of the swine show saturday morning 
at 830 at the Civic Center. The Jimmy Dale Black Showmanship Drive will be held. At 11 o'clock, there will be a sale buyer's luncheon. And at 12 noon, the premium sale starts for the 2017th Bailey County Junior Livestock Show. And there will be no school in Muleshoe on Friday because of the livestock show. Meow's the best place to get fajitas, burritos, salads, and grilled cheese. They also have the best seasoning ever. So go to Liao's Mexican Food Restaurant at 1010 West American Boulevard in Milshu, Texas. The best Mexican food ever. And this edition of the Mule Train News is being brought to you today by Liao's Mexican Restaurant along with the First Bank, where First Bank is proud to announce First Bank online, www.fbmuleshoe.com. Transfer funds easily between accounts. Make loan payments. View current and previous statement activity. Pay bills online with bill pay. Banking anytime with 24-7 access. Call or come by today, 202 South 1st Street, 806-272-4515. The First Bank right here in Muleshoe, where First Bank is proud to announce First Bank online www.fbmuleshoe.com The First Bank is member FDIC. At BK Boutique in Clovis, New Mexico, they're starting their winter clearance sale on Tuesday. And you can get 30 to 60% off on the latest of fashions in beautiful colors at BK Boutique. At 200 East 21st Street in Clovis, New Mexico. Also get 30% off on Selected Jewelry. And they have the latest of fashions and latest jewelry too at BK Boutique. They're open 10 in the morning until 5 in the afternoon on Tuesday through Friday. They're closed on Mondays. And at 10 until 3 on Saturday. Of course, that's New Mexico time. And on this Tuesday, the winter clearance sale starts at BK Boutique. Get 30 to 60% off at 200 East 21st Street in Clovis, New Mexico. Their telephone number, 575-762-1848. Idaloo does not have a freshman girls basketball team, so there will be no girls freshman game on Monday night. However, the freshman boys will play Idaloo here in Milshu at the Milshu High School new gym at 7.30 Monday night. Then at 5 o'clock on Tuesday evening, the JV boys and girls will play here in Muleshoe, Littlefield. At 6 o'clock, the Lady Mules will play the Lady Cats of Littlefield. And at 8 o'clock, the Mules and the Wildcats will play here in District Games. In District 2-3-I, there is a five-way tie for the girls' first place between, well, it's among <laughs> Muleshoe, Littlefield, Idaloo, Roosevelt, and Shallowater. We're all five and two on the district season. Then comes Slayton, two and five, Demet, one and six, and Friona, O oh, and seven. The Roosevelt girls beat the Lady Mules on Friday night, 50 to 37. There was a thrilling game between Idaloo and Littlefield, and it went into overtime. Littlefield girls won 46 to Idaloo's 44. In other girls' games on Friday, Slayton 63, Friona 39, Shallow Water, 34, Demet, 20. Olton, 86, 
Bovina 53, Silverton 51, Last Buddy 38, Martin 50, Smire 40. And the nets of Sudan fell to the Farwell Lady Steers 51 to 39. Now, both the Lady Mills and Mule Shoe Mills won their games over Roosevelt on Friday night in the JV bracket. Now, over on the boys' side, on Friday night, the scores were a victory for the Mules. The Mule Shoe Mules, 63, Roosevelt Eagles of Lubbock, 28. Dimmit 43, Shallow Water 41, in a very close one. Slayton 71, Friona 44, Little Phil 60, Idlew 50. Amherst beat Christ the King out of Lubbock 50 to 38. Olton 68. Bovina 59, Silverton 58, Last Buddy 42, Smire 62, Martin 45, Farwell 59, the Sudan Hornets 29. Now, the boys team from Milshew, the Mills are 5th in District 2, 3A, at standing at 2 and 3 for the district season. Now, during the halftime of the Tuesday night games, the third grade from Mary de Chazo Elementary School will perform. And on Tuesday at noon, the Mary de Chazo Elementary School robotics team will present a demonstration to the Milshu Rotary Club at the Civic Center for the Rotarians and their guests. That will be very interesting. On Tuesday afternoon after school at 3.30, Millville will meet. The celebration for Cleo and Ruby Ward of their 60th wedding anniversary has been postponed and will be held later this year. And on Thursday, that is January the 19th, will be Mr. and Mrs. Cleo Ward's 60th wedding anniversary. So congratulations to Cleo and Ruby Ward. But the celebration has been postponed to later this week, year, according to their son, Cecil Ward. Parents of the Milshu High School graduating class of 2017 need your help to make project graduation safe, fun, and memorable for all our MHS graduates. Your donations will help with expenses providing transportation, location, food, and gifts for the celebration immediately following graduation on May the 26th. This will be a parent-sponsored, non-alcoholic, drug-free event. You can send your contributions now for Project Graduation 2017 to 1703 West Avenue E. And if you need any other information, please call 806-946-9019. Make your checks payable to Project Graduation 2017. Acknowledgements will be made, will be mailed, and donations are preferred by at least May the 1st. Thank you in advance for your support of this very, very important project graduation. There's no way to tell how many lives have been saved because of project graduation. It was started years and years ago here in Milshu by Barbara Finney, one of the concerned parents. In our bargain basement for rent, 
a lot to park either a mobile home or a trailer on. Call or travel trailer on. Call 806 566 9993. St. Anne's Catholic Church in Bovina will have their annual German sausage dinner on Sunday, January the 29th from 1130 until 2 at St. Anne's Parish Hall on 3rd Street in Bovina, according to Joe Ann McDonald. The Fellowship of Alcoholics Anonymous and the Al Anon family groups meet at the First United Methodist Church on, in Milshoe. Al Anon meets on Monday nights every week at 7 o'clock. And please use the extreme south door on West Avenue F to enter the church. It's the first door on your right when you enter the hall. And then AA meets on, fr on uh, Tuesday and Friday nights at 7 at the First United Methodist Church at 507 West 2nd. AA is a fellowship of both men and women who share their hope, strength, and experiences to stay sober one day at a time. And Al-Anon is for family and friends of alcoholics and our drug addicts. We'll be back with more Mule Train in just a jiffy. The California Pizzeria and Salad Bar is now open in Mule Shoe next door to the Dollar General on West American Boulevard. Dine in or carry out by calling 806-559-8316. Jesus, Ophelia, and Nora prepare light and fluffy, freshly made pizza dough daily, along with a make-your-own salad bar that comes free with every pizza. California Pizzeria is open Monday through Saturday, noon until 8 p.m., and open on Sundays as well from 4 until 8. Order Supreme Pizza that comes with eight toppings or make your own pizza choosing from pepperoni, beef, sausage, black olives, mushrooms, onions, jalapenos, ham, bell pepper, pineapple, or tomatoes. Choose up to four toppings for a medium pizza for only $7.50 or large $8.50. Supreme Pizza, $10 for a medium or $12 for a large. Light and fluffy crust along with the fresh toppings and a tasty sauce make California Pizzeria your next stop when the whole family is hungry. The best pizza in town is California Pizzeria and Salad Bar on West American Boulevard next door to Dollar General. Dine in with Jesus, Sophia, and Nora or you can call for carryout 806-559-8316. They're open Monday through Saturdays, noon until 8 p.m. and Sundays 4 until 8 right here in Mule Shoe. There are now three new nurse practitioners at the Muleshoe Area Medical Center, Christy Lee, Leo Neria, and Jana Soto. And you can call 806-272-7544 at the Medical Clinic of Muleshoe, which is, by the way, located inside of the Muleshoe Area Medical Center at 708 South 1st Street to make an appointment with Christy Lee or Leo Neria. Working with Dr. Bruce Purdy at the Family Medical Clinic across the street from the hospital is Jana Soto, another new nurse practitioner. Welcome to Muleshoe and the Muleshoe Area Medical Center. Three new nurse practitioners to serve you, Christy Lee, Leo Neria, and Jana Soto. On your prayer list, please remember Bob Alexander, a resident at the Parkview Nursing Care Center, the father of Julie Cage, who is in grave condition. Please remember all of the Cage family and all of the family of Bob Alexander and Mr. Alexander in your prayers. Daniel Rye of Muleshoe tells us that his father, Tommy Rye of Muleshoe, has had walking pneumonia and is going back to the doctor on Monday morning. He also is going to have to have gallbladder surgery in the near future. Please remember Tommy Rye and his wife, Rosa, and all of their family in your prayers, please. Hilma Rojas of Muleshoe 
last week had hip surgery in Plainview and now is recuperating in Olton, according to her son, Rolando Rojas. She worked for 50 years at the Parkview Nursing Care Center and before that at the Milshu Nursing Home. Hilma Rojas, please put on your prayer list as she recuperates from hip surgery. Also remember Lavinia Garlington, who is back at the Lake Ridge Nursing Home and Rehabilitation in Lubbock, and her husband Lloyd Garlington here in Milshew. Dr. Richard Albertson of Duncan, Oklahoma, former Milshew High School teacher and coach, and Scott Dudley of Amarillo, the son of Naomi Watson Sanders of Decatur. Of course, Naomi grew up here in Milshew and is a Milshew High School graduate. Doc Jones and Lucretia Shannon, Pat and David Smith, Cleo and Ruby Ward, Cody Johnson, a Milshew High School teacher, his wife and children, Francis Del Toro, of Milshu, who is now at the Parkview Nursing Care Center, according to Dora Triana. Remember Frances Del Toro and her family in your prayers. Cassie Schaefer of Colorado Springs, formerly of Milshu, an MHS graduate, daughter of Marjorie Precure of Irving, former longtime resident of Milshu, recuperating from surgery. Cassie Precure Schaefer and her husband Larry and their family. Tanya Neal Heflin, daughter of Merlin and Jodine Neal, who has had surgery and is still recuperating. Violet Dean, Robert Gallman, Angela and Eric Hall, Jean Paul and Corlin Jarman, Jeff Jai Doyle and Leela Sue King, our Miss Santa, Irma Lee Al, Joe Copley, recuperating from knee surgery. Please remember Jim and Bonnie Carpenter, whose sister, Jerry Warren, 99 of Fort Worth, died recently. Barbara Jones Parton of Lubbock, formerly a Milshu MHS graduate, who had a pacemaker successfully put in just recently. Bob and Nina Landers, Anna B. Lane, Laurenette Mason in Lubbock, and she is in hospice care. Landon Nichols, Mary Ellen Robertson, Clinton and Maxine Rogers, Doris Scott recuperating from surgery, Dorothy Sorley, Brian Taylor, Dorothy Turner, Glenn Watkins, all of our servicemen and women and their families, the families of James Brown, Buck Markle, 87 of Floyd Data, the father of David Markle of Milshu, Mary Helen Wide of Abernathy, the mother of Janet Morgan of Milshu. Well, it's just about time for us to go on this edition of the Mule Train News on this Monday, January 16th. 2017 the Martin Luther King Jr. Day brought to you by the First Bank along with Leal's Mexican Restaurant. Find our Mule Train Rotating on Reach Broadband Channel 6 as well on our website MuleShoeTV.com free of charge on demand anytime you want to listen. This is Tumbleweed Smith, the Texas Giants. Details in a moment on the Sound of Texas. And the Sounds of Texas are brought to you here on Reach Broadband Channel 6 as well as MuleshoeTV.com by Bailey County Electric Cooperative Association with offices in Muleshoe as well as in Morton. They're celebrating 77 years of rural electrification right here in the Muleshoe area through Bailey County Electric. They're owned by the members they serve. Call 806-272-4504. Check them out online. B-C-E-C-O-O-P.com. The Board of Directors the members, the employees, the manager, CEO, David Markle, all hope that you enjoy the Sounds of Texas with Tumbleweed Smith. 
John and Penelope Shields moved to Hunt County, Texas from Alabama in the 1860s. They had nine sons. Four of them were giants. They were big boys, around seven feet, 11 and a half inches tall, and there were four of these four brothers. They were not quadruplets, but they were known during the 70s, 80s, and 90s as the Texas Giants. That's Joe Fred Cox of Commerce, who grew up in the area around Ladonia and Wolf City, where the Giants lived. It's curious that there's never been too much history done. There's never been a great deal of interest in them, especially now. Most people don't even seem to know they existed, but they were quite famous in this area in the 70s and the 80s, famous enough for Barnum to hire them and to take them on tour of the United States, Canada, and they toured with the circus for oh, several years. The four Shields giants were named Frank, Jack, Gus, and Shadrach, and people were awed by them. When you have nine children, five of whom are standard size, rather you know, small statue, and you have four brothers who are literally giants, you're a little surprised, if nothing else. They were having a hard time farming, so when the circus offer came, they jumped at it. There's nothing freakish about them other than their size. They were not unusually thin. They were not weak. They were in no way misformed, other than they were eight feet tall. But one of their problems was that since everything was done in those days with walking cultivators, that they could never find a plow with long enough handles to fit them. They toured with the circus in the 1880s, when their ages ranged from the late teens to the early 20s. Part of their living was made by selling pictures of themselves dressed in long coats. They resemble somewhat like Confederate officers. I don't know whether that was intentional or not, but they do. Pictures sold for 10 cents, and there were multitudes of them. Years ago, there's hard to find now, but years ago, any house around this area that didn't have a picture of the Texas Giants or the Wolf City Giants or the Ladonia Giants or the Shields Giants, whichever the time, really didn't have all of its accoutrements. They were not too well equipped because they were probably the most famous thing that ever happened in this country. Joe Fred Cox, Northeast Texas historian. I'm Tumbleweed Smith with The Sound of Texas.